Hey guys, welcome back. 104 Maverick checking in with another video. This time we are going through how to put your Harrier on the carrier successfully. We'll be using a couple of documents to aid us in our approach, which I'll link in the video description. The flight syllabus guide from the US Marine Corps that we used in the KC-130 video, and also the US Navy V-Stall Shipboard and Landing Officer NATOPS manual. I've got several carrier landing clips coming up for you guys, so we'll run through them and I'll talk you through the main points from the manuals as we go along. And I'll also give you guys some advice and things to watch out for. Okay, so the first thing we'll talk about is the actual ship itself, and then we'll run through the landing procedure. The USS Tarawa is a LHA class of carrier. Now, this is important for us to know so that we can cross-reference the manuals for details on things like heights and landing spots. The primary landing spot on the LHA carrier is between spot 7 and spot 8, known as 7.5, just adjacent to the elevator on the tram line. This is the spot that you would normally use, then you would taxi on to parking the aircraft and clear the spot for the next inbound jet that's coming in. There will be times when you're landing with more than one other aircraft, so it's important for everyone to know where the spots are on the deck and what the procedure is. If you're landing on an assigned spot, it's important to know where that spot is on the deck so that you don't overshoot and have to go around. All the clips in this video are going to be on the primary landing spot. While you're practicing th these landings, I recommend that you do the same, just to get the familiarity of the variables as you approach the carrier, and also to work up a little bit of muscle memory. Once you have successfully landed several times on the primary landing spot, try moving on to different spots along the deck, providing it's safe to do so and there's no other aircraft there. The next thing we'll take a quick look at before we move on to the circuit itself is the altitude that you should arrive abeam the landing spot when, if, when we're using the primary landing spot or any of the landing spots on the carrier. This is the altitude that you want to be at as you come in to basically match the carrier's speed before you do your crossover. Uh, that's 120 feet at the very lowest. We, we don't really want that altitude to get lower than 100, um, but nominal entry into this um, envelope of flight should be 120 feet uh, just off the port side of the, the actual carrier itself. About, about one aircraft's width is ideal, just off the port side of the carrier at 120 feet. Okay, so now that we know where on the ship we're going to land and where we're going to arrive abeam that position and at what height, Let's take a look at what the circuit is to arrive at that position. The recovery we're going to talk about today is the Case 1 recovery. Case 1 recoveries are the preferred recovery method for day and night VMC operations when the weather is good, generally with a cloud base above 3,000 feet and visibility greater than 5 miles. A VFR recovery is conducted to the overhead and then we follow the sequence around a beam the landing spot. The circuit consists of seven main points. The brake, downwind, a beam, 90, the groove, a beam the landing spot, and over the landing spot. So we arrive for the brake at 800 feet, doing 350 knots off the right hand side of the ship. The brake itself will actually happen 10 seconds after we pass over the bow of the ship. Once we make the turn left 180 degrees, we roll out wings level and descend to 600 feet and prepare to complete our checks. Now we reach the abeam position and enter into a bit of workload by completing our landing checks. On top of our regular landing checklists, we also want to turn off our external lights, make sure our anti-skid is in the nose wheel steering position, water switch is set to landing, Nozzles are between 50 and 60 degrees, and at the airspeed at this point should be well below 250 knots. Arriving at the 90 position, we want to have all our checks complete here guys. The flaps should be set, gear should be down, everything should be set up with the nozzles still in the 50 to the 60 degree position depending on what you're comfortable with. You make the turn for the 90 position around about between 3 and 5 seconds after passing a beam the, the landing spot, depending on what the wind's doing. As we make the turn, we want to be passing the 90 point between 450 feet to 400 feet, with between 10 to 12 units of AOA, slowly increasing the power to manage the descent rate for entry into the groove. Once we enter the groove, we want to be rolling out between 300 and 325 feet, lined up offset to the carrier. At this point we're looking for nozzles between 60 and 70 degrees depending on how fast you want to approach the ship. 
But the most important thing to do at this point is make smooth power adjustments. You don't want to be too wild with the throttle here. You just want to keep the witch's hat slightly above the horizon and manage the power to maintain a gentle descent aiming to arrive a beam the landing spot at 120 feet. To keep workload to a minimum, your aim should always be to stay in the hover stop nozzle position once you've selected it for the first time. So the trick is getting used to the closure rate after selecting hover stop and timing that to match the speed of the ship as you slow down without having to move the nose up and down too wildly. Hover stop in the AV-8B is 82 degrees. The manual for the aircraft states that hover stop is 82 degrees plus or minus one. So using 81 degrees or 83 degrees is perfectly acceptable. However, all these clips will be at 82 degrees. Once we arrive abeam the landing spot at 120 feet, we check our airspeed with the ship, aiming to land on the primary landing spot and stabilise for a quick moment before making our level cross over to the right. As we cross over the deck, it's important to manage the altitude and avoid descending, so we're just adding in little bits of power as we need it. Remembering the lowest we want to be crossing the deck is at is about 100 feet. We don't want to be any lower. Over the spot, we're looking for a smooth descent lined up with the tram line to land without allowing the nose to drop and the aircraft to start moving forward. It's important to maintain your speed in reference to the ships to remain over the correct spot at this point, so you want to be cross-checking what you can see outside the aircraft with what your HUD's telling you your speed is. Okay, so now we know how the Case 1 recovery works. So what we'll do now is we'll just go through some um, internal cockpit clips with uh, some Case 1 recoveries here on the carrier. As you can see, it's a nice day. Uh, VFR conditions definitely here. Living the dream out in uh, somewhere just south of England actually on the Normandy map here. So. Uh, yeah, good little recovery just south of Southampton, I think we are. So we're coming up here, 800 feet, 350 knots. Just a quick disclaimer, guys, obviously this is early access um, <coughs> footage that we've got here. So this process probably will change as DCS goes forward and more updates come out. Unfortunately, we don't have access to the TACAN and navigation radios and radios in general at the moment. So... Um, this process will change, but this is just a, a good idea for you guys to get sorted out on your, your VFR approaches here into the, onto the boat. So we flew over the bow, we're just waiting for our 10 seconds for the turn. I'll make a turn round to the left now. You want, you want to make this turn fairly tight, around about 3G is ideal just to get it back onto the 180. Because you don't want to have your turn through the 90 at the bottom end of the circuit to be too long. So we're now in a downwind position, just descending down to 600 feet. Got there a little bit early, so we'll just make a, just a tad climb up. Letting the airspeed come back now. Now we're getting into the busy period where we're getting ready to do our checks up across from the beam position. So we've already got the nose wheel steering set. We turn the external lights off. We're going to select the VTOL, VSTOL master mode on the HUD. Just so we've got a better idea of what we're doing. water selection to land in and we're just extending our uh, downwind leg here just past the beam position we're taking the flaps now at 200 knots and we'll go for the gear on the turn in here gear. for the 90 Landing position gear. So managing the power here, you can see the indicator in the HUD. Now as we descend, I'm looking for between 10 and 12 degrees of AOA. Just a quick check on the carrier just to make sure everything's working out. So now we're thinking about AOA at this point. Just letting the power come back a little bit just to get that AOA now. Just slowly re increasing the power just to manage that AOA now. Looking for the groove at 300 uh, to 325 feet. We're in good shape at the moment. Nozzle still 50 degrees. Witch's hat above the horizon, adding in bits of power now for the groove, 300 feet we're looking for. Right on the money now, looking good. 
Okay, so at this point we're thinking about trim. Always want to be trimming in the Harrier, guys. This is no different. We want to be trimmed out here so that we're doing as minimal work as possible with the actual uh, stick in front of us. Now we're looking to select a 60 degree nozzle. Just starting to bleed off that airspeed. Keeping the witch's hat above the horizon. Looking for that descent now. Nice and easy. There's no hurry at the moment. We're only descending at 100 feet per minute. Looking just to time this descent so that we arrive a beam the land position at 120 feet. As you can see on the HUD, not making any crazy power adjustments here guys, just nice and smooth power adjustments, keeping the witch's hat above the horizon, or around about the horizon, dipping it down just a couple of degrees if I feel the need that we're just slowing down just too much. Still not on hover stop yet, 70 degrees on the nozzle, we're looking for hover stop pretty soon. Some good closure, good rate of descent. Looking for hover stop now. Hover stop is set. Going to bring the witch's hat just above the horizon a little bit. Just slow that uh, forward momentum down. Still keeping a nice uh, negative vertical descent here. Just levelling off at 170 feet just to compose myself. And just creeping forward with the witch's hat around about the horizon now. Again, no major power movements. Just nice and nice and smooth adjustments with the power. Moving the witch's hat around the horizon as I need to to uh, synchronise mass speed with the speed that the ship's going. Creeping forward now, nice and easy. I, I've got fuel, I'm not in a hurry to land. I've got lots of water, I'm not actually using any water at the moment. Everything's under control, so there's no need to rush this. Just creeping in with the witch's hat. Watching the witch's hat, watching the boat, watching the feet per minute. Looking for the landing zone, the primary spot, 7.5. We're a little high, we're 20 feet high, but that's all good. Well within parameters here, come up to 130 feet. Looking to synchronise the speed with the boat now. Keeping an eye on that power, just watching that altitude, just want to come down a little bit to 120, sling it across here on the right. Making the crossover now, everything under control. Nice smooth power adjustments as we need them to go across at 120 feet. Watching the horizon with the witch's hat. Looking for the tramline now and coming down smoothly. Trying to avoid the nose coming down, keeping the nose up. I want to bring that nose up a little bit. Down a set of the brakes. And here's another clip you can see. We're just getting set up in the groove here. 330 feet, uh, just descending down. We've got nozzle 70 selected, keeping the witch's hat above the horizon. We're coming in a little bit faster than we were the last time, which is why we've got nozzle 70. But at the moment, we're just happy just to sit with that nozzle as we creep forward. Uh, Levelling off the trim here, thinking about trim, trim, trim. Just making sure that when we take our hands off the stick, if we wanted to do that, that the nose isn't going to go up or down. We're always just adjusting that trim as we're creeping forward. Uh, happy with 80 knots now, just kind of flowing in there, there at 300 feet. Going to start our descent now, just witch's hat slightly up and a little bit of power coming off just to get that feet per minute down so we're, we're coming alongside the boat at 120 knots. Looking for the hover stop, just went slightly past it and there we go, 82 degrees selected. Hover stop is, is set. So now we're just man managing the power and managing that witch's hat to uh, time our arrival so that we're 120 feet alongside uh, doing the same speed as the boat. Watching the heading, watching the boat, watching the feet per minute. Just moving the witch's hat around as, as required. A little, couple of, couple of degrees down, one degree down just to uh, keep that closure rate up until we're ready, just to bring the nose up a little bit now, just to shrink that closure rate down and uh, get ourselves lined up with the primary landing spot. 
Still no rush, not trying to come in too fast. Good bit of nose up now, which is around about the kind of the maximum amount of nose up um, that I like to be operating with. About three or four degrees maximum nose up I, I like to do just to minimise the workload. So levelling off now and, and looking for to match my speed with the, the boats. Nose up four degrees just to get us sink down there. Looks like the boat's going a little bit slower this time, about 11 or 12 knots, something like that. 120 feet. I beam the landing position. Creeping over. A little bit of power just to keep that altitude up as we cross over the deck. Keeping the power on. Looking for that tram line right in the middle of the HUD. Easy descent. Making the adjustments. Committing to the descent. Committing to the descent. And we're down. Not, not pretty, but we're down. We're on the line. Brakes. And we'll put the nozzles back to zero. Certainly not the best, but we got on board. Okay, here's another Case 1 recovery here. In slightly lower conditions, probably right on the limit of the, the Case 1 condi recovery conditions here. We're just getting settled into the groove now. We've selected nozzle 70. We're coming round for, we're just establishing at 300 feet. Airspeed's uh, 85, 86 knots at the moment, coming back nicely. Witch's hat on the horizon, uh, and we're looking good. Thinking about trim here again. Always thinking about trim. Can't emphasise this enough, guys, how much time you've got, you, you got to spend trimming in as you get to, especially at this stage. You want to get it all set up so that you're minimising your workload down at the bottom end. So trim, trim, trim at this point. Witch's hat just a little bit above the horizon, same same deal guys, witch's hat up and then power down, that's what we're always looking at, we want to slow down and descend, uh, transitioning into a, into a hover, witch's hat up, power down and letting the feet per minute just, just get down, if you look there on the right hand side of the HUD, always in control guys, feet per minute's not dropping down to like 500, 600, nothing like that, always in control around about 0 to 200 to 250 we're looking for. Bring a little bit more nozzle in just to just to steady up looking for about 60 knots and we're going for hover stop around about the 60 knot mark so again witch's hat above the horizon a little bit of power we're just leveling off a little bit just while we we watch that airspeed just bleed off going to start letting the uh, the nose drop down there as we close in One of the easy mistakes to make at this point is to be too slow and you end up, like, ch especially when the carrier is moving at a decent speed, you end up chasing the carrier. So don't worry if that happens to you. It happened to me quite a few times when I was first, when I first started learning these circuits. Um, it's just a case of getting used to when you select the hover stop. Um, I'm still quite new at doing all this as well like you guys, so I'm sure my technique will get a little bit better, a little bit sharper in the future. But at the moment I think it's uh, it's looking okay. So we're decent closure on the boat here. We committed to hover stop. We've stayed in the hover stop nozzle, just moving the witch's hat around the horizon as we need to. Uh, now we're coming up a little quick, so we're looking to bleed off that airspeed with the, the high nose there. Slowing down nice and easy. Looking for 120 feet. Watching the ship. All right, speeds are just starting to synchronize now. 120 feet. So, walking the witch's hat to maintain the speed and uh, the altitude, checking to the right, lined up on the primary landing spot, moving to the right now, nice and controlled, speeds matched with a boat, we're dipping down a little bit, 110 feet, still okay, still above 100, speed's good, little slow, nose down just to recover some speed, looking for the tram line, nose down just for speed. Nose coming back up now on the tram line, committing to the descent, a little slow in the descent, committing a little bit more, down on the tram line on the brakes. Welcome on board. Here's another clip in these uh, great low visibility conditions here with the rain on. Uh, coming in, just establishing on the groove, 300 feet. We're not so 60 this time, so still coming in with a good rate of knots on. We've got 97 knots across the front there. Uh, 
Uh, now we're all set up and uh, ready to approach the boat, looking for that slow descent in. Witch's hat above the horizon, power down. Nozzle 70. Just watching that speed coming off, keeping control of the, the feet per minute there. Like I said, we don't want to get too wild with that, guys. We want to make nice, smooth adjustments with the throttle. Feet per minute's coming a little bit down now, so just checking that. Going through 60 knots, losing the uh, the lift that we get from the wings. It's all jet-borne flight now from this point in, so got to be ready with some extra power. And another really important pointer for you guys to take note of there is you got to be careful going through this the 60 knot mark. That's when you, you lose the power from your wings. Like I said, you lose all that lift. So, yeah, just be ready around about the 60 knot mark. You're going to need you're going to need some power there. So you got to be ready. You got to prepare for that. Don't have to be too wild with it. We've selected hover stop here. We're a little slow. So we're just looking for the nose down around about the horizon just to catch up with the boat. Well, we're not speeding up. We're maintaining 30 knots. Just creeping back down to 30 there. So nice and controlled, plenty of fuel, still not using any water, nice and controlled with the throttle guys, no wild movements with the throttle that require any water usage. If I need a couple more percent, I give it just a couple more percent, I don't just slam the throttle forward and give it an extra 10 or 5 or whatever. You're just looking to be as smooth as possible with the throttle. Hundred and twenty feet looking to line up with the uh, landing spot here. Just looking for that synchronization. Ready with the power of it need be. Hundred and twenty feet, stable and ready, looking at the ship. Cross check to the right. Happy and stable. Moving right. Checking right. A little bit of a drip down, hundred and ten feet, still okay, continuing right. Airspeed good, altitude good, a little low, tramline on, coming down, committing to the descent, a little slow, nice and steady, looking good, looking good, on the way, brakes. Thanks for watching guys, I hope this video helps, it's not an easy manoeuvre to pull off but uh, with a little bit of practice and perseverance you definitely can get on top of it. If you have any questions leave them in the comments uh, and I will try and get back to you. Subscribe if you haven't done so already and uh, leave a like or a comment, let me know what you think and I will catch you guys in the next video. Maverick out.